Mallory Harris. George Hyde George Hybrido, what everyone else remembers is that he has a wickedly funny sense of humor. Um, what everyone also will remember is that wickedly funny sense of humor is sometimes extremely well-timed and other times not so well-timed. It's especially not well-timed when you are the butt of his joke. Um, George was always cheerful. Um, he was very dedicated to the band. He came um, both his older brothers participated in the band, and um, I think felt some pressure to, to live up to them musically. Um, you never needed to feel that way, because you, I think as you, you, you grew in the band, you realized you stand on your own two feet. And I want you to know that you're really going to be missed, and that you contributed a lot, especially this year, your playing got, got, got a lot better. Where are you going to college? What's up? Case Western Reserve. Pretty good, uh, pretty good resume. Um, Miriam Jackson. <laughs> Miriam is either a five or six year member of the March. Five year, five year member of the March again, which we don't really have anymore. She failed two classes. <laughs> she's, she's actually 24 years old. <laughs> um, Years ago, when the marching band had about 35 people in it, they not only wanted eighth graders to march, but they begged eighth graders to march. <laughs> and um, Miriam's older brother was in our marching band. Not, I guess most people don't know, but, but Joe has a couple degrees in music education. At one time, way back in the day, was a band director himself. Um, so, comes from a musical family. Um, and. Um, Miriam is another one of those kids, kind of like Jared, that whenever there was an opportunity to play, she took it. Um, she started out on, in the pit or on the cymbals? So, pit. Pit, moved to cymbals, moved to bass drum, kept moving up, kept, kept making musical improvements, and um, just a remarkable end to a five year career. Congratulations. <laughs> she didn't have to Nathan Lavender. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say a 
babble a lot about Nathan because because what I am going to say, I hope everybody in the room really, really takes to heart, and I, I hope that you've gotten an opportunity to uh, just to, to get this sense from Nathan. There, there, there are a handful of people in your life that when you meet them, you describe them just as good. And through his four years here, man, this is a good guy. I mean, he's just a good person. Um, in addition to that, all the other things too, he's just a, a very capable player. And he knows that I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say all of them because, because they're too numerous to mention. But, but there's so many things that he said that just came out of the blue. Um, there's a specific type of trumpet that's used in orchestral playing that is really not used in band playing. And we were gonna, we kind of toyed around with early in the year playing a piece that required this trumpet called a C trumpet. And the three players that were gonna do it were, were Josh and Taylor and Nathan. Nathan. And I called him in the office and I said, well, Nathan, this is a huge problem. And he immediately started looking at me very calmly. And I said, this is a C trumpet part. And out of the blue, this kid said, I have a C trumpet. <laughs> And I was blown away. I was like, you know, he always saw, he always had the right answer to solve problems. I just didn't expect that. It was the most calm thing, because it's not something that really anybody has. And I love it. Um, but Nathan, you're such a good guy. I, I know that you're going to be successful. Um, keep, keep in touch with all of us, please. Chase Lawson. sure why Chase joined us or when he joined us or how he joined us. <laughs> he doesn't play an instrument and he's never been in class. You know, this kid just is on the bus one day learning stuff. I say, oh, okay. And then, then the next year he's back and he's loading stuff and he's going to games with us. And I was like, so tell me your name again. It's Chase Lawson. So the next year he comes back and he's still kind of the leader of loading things and finally he's a senior and he has helped us cheer, cheerfully and joyfully at one of the most underappreciated jobs and that is Rodney. He's, he's loaded stuff wherever he needed to be. He's, he's, um, he's kind of made himself a part of the, of the band program and I think that's great. Aaron Levy. Far away is possible. Um, another very, very fine young man. Um, Aaron is, uh, and if there's anybody else that knows, I don't know her if I didn't say it, uh, please correct me. He's an Eagle Scout. We seem to have a lot of Eagle Scouts in band, and I think the reasons are probably self explanatory. It takes discipline, it takes teamwork, it takes commitment. It says a lot of young, about a young man when he attains that, that rank. I saw Aaron's leadership, particularly this past year in the marching band, where I think prior to the marching band season, he had not really seen himself as, as the leader. Well, when leadership was thrust upon him, he rose to the challenge and um, did some, some things with the trombone section that quite frankly I haven't seen leaders do before. Um, again, I hate to sound like a broken record about making people better that are around you just by being good yourself. This kid did it, and um, you are going to Georgia Tech, where are you going? Kentucky. University of Kentucky. Thank goodness it's not Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Sarah Probably irritates her when I 
I say the worst first type situation. But it is what it was. <laughs> yes, it is what it is. When Sarah came into the Dunwoody Band from Peachtree, um, she said that Mr. Shores made her first chair for one day because the chair audition was playing the longest note she could and she sounded great, but when she had to change to another note, she got to last chair <laughs> and stayed there. <laughs> so when she came into, into high school, her clarinet skills were maybe not the best. Um, but she asked me, you know, what can I do to get to, to, to fix this? And I said, well, private lessons would help. And I know just a guy. He's a crazy Russian, and he's the finest clarinet player that I've ever heard in my life. And he just so happens to live in Roswell. So a couple of years ago, she started taking lessons and um, started moving up. And as she started moving up, she started practicing harder. And she started practicing harder, she, got, she started getting better. And as she got better, she eventually last year, at the end of the year, got the first year in the section. This year, I said it, earlier tonight. Um, she worked on that clarinet concertina for about two and a half weeks and you heard it yourself. It was just, it was marvelous. Um, her musical future is 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 set. Um, and you just have to have the patience to get there, but you will get there. Okay? Lauren Palmer. Um, getting back to the high readers will probably remember this. My first year at Dunwoody, uh, the, the, all the keyboards and the equipment that's in front of the marching band is called pit. And when the high readers' older son was our pit captain my first year here, our pit consisted of a Casio keyboard sitting on a borrowed library cart. <laughs> um, for smoke effects, um, Michael Reamer, who is Ben Reamer's older brother, we did a James Bond show at the end of it, and we wanted it to explode, everybody fall down. Michael had a leaf blower and baby powder. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very musical, but it had the effect. It was, it was not good. So when Lauren came in, when Lauren came in as a freshman, um, the pit grew pretty substantially. And as, as it grew, she grew, and she grew musically. And I think it became more important for her to take take a hold of that and really do something with it. And boy does it show. You know, several years later, we have eight or nine members of the pit. We have, you know, as much equipment as we have. We need new equipment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have, you know, as much equipment as we can possibly have. And it just adds so much. If you think about some of the great percussion features that, that we played in, in her four years here, and that one down to Georgia was, was, was really, really cool. That's one that I remember. And, um, um, it's just been it's just been amazing watching watching what you've done because you can rightfully take much of the credit for, for where we're going to be in the next five years and I really appreciate all the leadership.